Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christy. In today's video, I am actually working on my recipe binder, which a lot of you have asked me to do a video on. And as I was doing that, I was looking up some recipes and realized that some of you have also asked me in the past if I can show you how I come up with my meal plans for the week. So I decided that I'm gonna do this into two different videos. So this video is going to be about how I actually get inspired to come up with different recipes that I'm gonna have that particular week. The other video I'm working on is how to actually create your own recipe binder using very, very cheap Dollar General store things. So if you have not seen the recipe binder video, I will link it down below. So if you're new to my channel, as I said, my name is Christy and welcome. I hope that you'll consider subscribing. I do a lot of meal prepping and meal planning videos. I have recipe videos. I am currently on a weight loss journey that I'm sharing also I'm following the WW blue program but I do provide the points for all three programs on my channel I will also link you to the recipes so if you're not following WW you can get any nutritional facts there but you certainly don't need to be following any type of weight loss program to get tips and ideas from my channel so I hope you'll consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button first things first if you do like videos like this please make sure to give this a thumbs up it lets me know that you do like the video and it also greatly helps me with the YouTube algorithm all right so this one is actually going to be one that I'm going to show you on my screen. So I'm going to bring you behind the scenes and kind of show you my screen, show you what I do to get inspiration for whatever I'm going to be making that week. And this is just how I'm doing it. There are a lot of different ways that you can do it. So completely up to you how you do it. Uh, I will tell you that I actually start first with my pantry and my freezer or my fridge. I determine what I already have because I obviously want to use what I have first. So a lot of people will basically make a meal plan by just writing down the recipes that they want for that week and then they will see what they have and make a grocery list out of that. I try and do the opposite. I try to start with what I already have on hand and that way I can create recipes off of that. And that way it keeps my grocery bill a little bit lower. Uh, as we move into 2021, my husband and I have made it a goal to be a little bit more frugal with our grocery bill and some of the things that we can cut down on. So basically at this point, as I'm making my weekly plan, the first thing I do is head to my pantry, to my freezer, to my fridge, and just see what do I have for meats on hand? What do I have for vegetables that maybe need to be used up during the week? So uh, just kind of take an inventory. There are some people who actually do freezer inventories and pantry inventories. I myself have not started doing anything like that yet. I do think it's a great idea. Um, but just right now for me, I don't have that done. So that is something that I would like to have on my goals for 2021 to start doing. So let me take you behind the scenes and just kind of show you how I come up with my meal plan. All right, so the first thing I do is get my recipe binder out. That is where I keep my meal plans. So I always keep extra meal plans in the back. I keep grocery lists, I keep recipe cards, and you can find all of these on my website. I will put the link down below. They are free, you can print them out. And I have here's where I have my extra meal plans. I have one for Monday through Friday, and then one for Monday through Sunday. So this is the one that I'm gonna pull out just for purposes of right now. I'm not actually going to make a whole meal plan because if I do that then this video is going to be extremely long. I just want to give you an idea of how I do it. The other thing that I'm going to get out is a grocery list. So I usually just keep several of these in here and then I just pull one out. So normally at the beginning of each month I pull one out of here. So some of this stuff is gonna be redundant because some of this you may have already heard in the other video. Some of it is it's kind of a two-in-one video. So some of the things I may have already said in the other video. But basically, I just pull out one of my shopping lists. And just so you know, on the back it has a previous meal plan. That's because I recycle my paper. So once I do a meal plan, I put it in my printer and use it for something else. So it saves on my paper printer and it saves on paper. All right, so the next thing I do now is just start making a plan for what I want. So the first thing I do is take 
a piece of paper and I write down what I'm going to be having as far as my main meats. So I start with meat. So obviously if you're vegetarian or vegan, uh, you may start with like your proteins. So I guess that's a way to word it. I start with my proteins. So for me, I always have chicken. Um, I usually will also have some kind of turkey. I was gonna write ground turkey, but we'll just write turkey. I usually have pork and of course salmon isn't always, that's usually Monday nights. Um, but we'll put salmon or fish because I will sometimes have cod or something else with it So that's always Monday nights Wednesday nights is the night I usually try to do chicken because I do chicken breast and I have something light with it um, That's because I weigh in on Thursday. So that's just kind of the way that I've always done it Then I have my turkey and pork Then we can also have beef if you want something beef So these are just my starting points that I have and then for breakfast and lunch, I have to determine those to see when I'm gonna be having things for dinner. Not so much the breakfast, but the lunch. So the dinners are gonna revolve around the lunch because if I'm making a lunch, let's just say that I'm making chicken fried rice, for example, for lunch one week, then I'm not gonna to wanna to do chicken on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday because my breakfasts and my lunches that I that I meal prep are meal prepped for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So if I was having chicken for lunch, then what I would do is have chicken like Thursday or Friday. I would have it later in the week. Fridays, we usually do kind of like pizza type things, either strombolis or I do our pizza mushrooms or sometimes we also have a fish fry. So those are pretty much, Friday nights are usually pretty much that. Uh, a lot of times, one one night during the week, we may have subs. So it's not like I'm gonna be making something with all these each night. So this is just where I'm gonna jot this down and then I'm gonna decide from there. So for purposes of this planning, I'm just gonna show you how I did my meal plan. Rather than writing out a new meal plan, meal plan I'm gonna show you how I did my meal plan for last week, which was Thanksgiving week. Since it was a little bit shorter week, that way this won't be such a long video. So this was my meal plan for the week of Thanksgiving. I ended up doing chicken salad, kind of like the bentos bowls, bento bowls I did. It was BLT chicken salad. So I knew that I was doing chicken for lunch, which meant that Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday night, I did not want to do chicken. And as you'll see here, when I did the plan, I wrote chicken marsala skillet. But if you remember, during my meal plan, I did mention that I would not be having that that night. So had this not been Thanksgiving week, what I would have done is just bumped this to Thursday. It would have been on Thursday night. So for lunch, I did chicken salad, and then I decided to do my overnight oats for breakfast. So then that's when I determined my dinners. Monday night is always salmon. I pretty much every single week have salmon and I have a rotation of four different types of salmon that I have. So Monday night, there's really no thinking involved. So if you have a night that you always do the same thing, go ahead and write that down first. So you start with your, your blank piece of paper and let's say that you are one who always does Taco Tuesdays, then you would just go ahead and write tacos on Tuesday get that done. If Friday nights you always do like homemade pizzas, then you would just put that down, homemade pizzas. So anything that you normally have, you would wanna go, down, go through and put that first, and then you can work around that. So for me, when I do it, I always write down salmon. What I usually do is just write salmon on here and then I decide which type of salmon we're gonna have that night. I look back on my meal plans from previous weeks. I pretty much keep a month's worth of my meal planner so I can look back on them. Each month I usually start new. So that's pretty much how I do that. Now for my sides, I always pretty much have rice and a vegetable with the salmon, but, and this recipe here, this is a recipe that always has potatoes and carrots with it. So depending on what you have, uh, my sides are pretty much always the same. And basically you can think about that. Think about the sides that you normally have. So you probably pretty much always use the same things. For me, my vegetables, I always have broccoli. I always have green beans. I always do Brussels sprouts, so I pretty much have a normal rotation of vegetables that I do, and so I'll just mix those up, you know, just depending what I feel like each night. 
And then for my sides, for like my starch, it's pretty much always rice or some type of potatoes. And then sometimes I don't do any type of starch at all. There are a lot of nights that I don't have a potato or rice. So just that's basically the biggest thing is just think about the things that you normally have that you normally keep in your rotation. So let me jump to the computer and show you now how I come up with the actual recipes. All right, so this is basically what I do when I am trying to get some recipes, find inspiration for my meal planning for the week. So the first thing I do is go to my own website, of course, and see what if there's anything that I haven't made of my own in a while. So I go into recipes and free printables, which this is the page that you can find all the recipes that I have on my website, as well as if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see all the printables that are free. So you can click on these and download them and you can print them anytime you want. They are on there for you to use anytime you want. So this is where I print out my meal plans for the, well usually I do it for the month. So at the beginning of each month, I'll come on here and I'll print out four meal plans. So that way I have it for the month. I'll print out four shopping lists and then I may print out a couple blank recipe cards just in case I get inspiration for some new recipe. So basically that's the first thing I do, print those out in the beginning of the month and I keep them in my binder. So I'll just scroll through and see if there's anything that I haven't made in a while to see if there's anything that I want to make of my own for that week. So we could say, let's just say, okay, I haven't made the blue cheese buffalo meatballs in a while. So I'll come on here and just make sure, see what I have, check the ingredients, make sure that I already have them. So like I said, the first thing that I do is check my pantry, my fridge, my freezer, make a list of anything that needs to be used up or things that I already have so that I know. So I do know that I have some ground turkey breast in my fridge or in my freezer, so I wouldn't need to buy that. I know I have hot sauce. Blue cheese crumbles, I don't have. Usually I have those in my freezer because I don't, when I buy them, I only use a little bit, so then I freeze the rest, but I did not see any in there. I have butter, I ha always have green onions. So for this recipe, if I wanted to make this, the only thing I'd need to buy is the blue cheese crumbles. So that's an option. So then I would just, I know I already have this one printed out, but if you don't have the recipe printed out, then you could print it out at that point. So the way to print out the recipes on my website is you just go down to the bottom. All of them have the recipe here. You just hit the download button and then you can print it to your printer. So that's enough of my website because <laughs> I wanted to show you how we actually look for recipes in general. So the next thing that I'm going to do is go to Google. So Google is pretty much what I use all the time. Sometimes I use Pinterest to get inspiration. There are a lot of ideas that I'll get from Pinterest, but Honestly, I've been using Google for a long time. Let's just say that I want some type of chicken recipe. So I want chicken breast. I'm just gonna type in chicken breast, hit enter, and the first thing I'm gonna do, instead of going down and looking at the recipes like this, I am going to hit images. I want it to show me all the pictures of chicken breast because I'm a very visual person and then that way I can kind of go through and I can get an idea of something that looks good. But now here's one st spinach stuffed chicken breast. So I just click on that and then I'll just follow that to the website and see what all is in this. So let's jump to the recipe on this one. Usually you can jump to the recipe rather than reading everything if you don't want to read it. So we're going to jump to the recipe. We're going to see this has chicken breast, olive oil, paprika, salt, garlic. So a lot of spices, cream cheese, grated Parmesan, mayonnaise, spinach. So this doesn't seem too bad. I think we could use the fat-free cream cheese, or in my case, I don't usually use fat-free things. Uh, in my case, for the cream cheese, I would use the one-third less fat. So basically then what you could do from here is create the recipe into the WW app to see if the, how, what the points are gonna be. Here's how you can find. Now see, this does have 24 grams of fat. That's because, probably because they're using the full fat cream cheese and full fat mayonnaise and the olive oil. So you could do some tweaking with that one. So one thing though, there are a lot of websites out there that give you the points for WW if you trust the website. 
My favorite that I absolutely trust is Skinny Taste. I've never once run into any of Gina's recipes that the points are wrong. I've never come across that. So there are a lot of websites out there that will give you the points, but you can definitely tweak it uh, and make it your own and the point, you know, make the points low. So that's basically how I do it. Now, if you want to get real technical and let's say that, look, I, maybe you're saying, look, Christy, I don't have time to be putting all those into my tracker. I need, I need something to give me the points and I trust the people. Well, you could put in Weight Watchers chicken. Obviously, the first thing you can check is the WW app or the Weight Watchers website. They have a ton of recipes on the website there that you could definitely do. That would be the easiest thing. But you can come over here and you can just put in WW Chicken or Weight Watchers Chicken and then you can click Images and then you'll have different things. So this one is Weight Watchers Chicken Enchilada Bake and... So now if we go into it, you can usually see, um, sometimes it'll tell about the person, like if they're following Weight Watchers. Um, so she's just saying how to make it. So let's see if she gives the points. Okay. So she's saying, she breaks down the points. She's saying four WW points for blue and purple and seven points for green. So she must get the points somehow. So this website is probably one that you could use. I've actually never heard of this website. This is one that you could probably use to get Weight Watcher friendly recipes. The way that I do it is different because of the fact that I do a lot of recipe tweaking. So I'm really digging into it pretty deep as far as tweaking recipes. You know, it doesn't really have to go, you don't have to go into it that deep. I do a lot of tweaking of recipes to kind of make it a little bit more point friendly. So that's just, to me, it doesn't matter if I come across a recipe that doesn't have the points because I'll build it into the Weight Watchers WW app anyway and get the points myself. But if you are one that is just wanting to rely on other people's uh, points, you definitely could find websites out there that list the points. There are a ton of them. I think another one that I came across recently was called Emily Bites. I think it's... B-Y-T, Emily Bites. No, I think it's B-I-T-E-S. Okay, see, so we're still on images, so it's gonna show me all her pictures. All right, Emily Bites. Yeah, Lightened Up Comfort Food. I think I wanna say that she gives Weight Watcher points as well. Let's click on one of her recipes. That looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, so she's get, she gives the points for her recipes too. So there are a ton of people out there who give the Weight Watcher points. So you definitely don't need to create them yourself if you don't want to. But again, I will let you know that behind every website is a person <laughs> like me who can make mistakes. It's very possible, uh, especially a lot of the websites that you go to, they don't have a team of people who are doing some of the things for them. So like for me, for myself, honestly, I rely on a lot of my followers and my subscribers who will message me and say, hey, I found a, I found a typo because I really want you to let me know when you find things like that. So I just say that to say that we can make mistakes and sometimes the points may not be correct. So I, I always just say, keep that in mind that it's very possible there are mistakes on some recipes when you when it comes to other people giving, giving the points and not using the Weight Watchers WW app. Now, if you wanna go even further and say you want like Instant Pot chicken breast or let's, let's find Instant Pot pork chops. So I'm gonna put Instant Pot Pork Chops, I'm gonna hit images, and I'm gonna see what looks good. Things like this that are covered in gravy, those are probably gonna be a little bit higher. Scroll around and see what you can find. One thing that you can do too, if you have somebody that has a website, so for example, we'll go to my, my website, and you don't see where you can search. So on mine, I don't have a search bar. Uh, this is just a website that I made myself I don't have, like I said, I don't have a team. If you ever come across a website like this that doesn't have a search bar for you to search for specific recipes, 
For example, on mine, you can just come to the recipe page. You can hit Control F and it'll bring down a little bar. And then you could put whatever you want in there. Let's say you want to know if I have something that has ranch in it. You hit ranch and it's going to bring you to it. So let's say I want chicken. Hit chicken, then just keep hitting enter and it'll bring you to the next word that says chicken. Chicken, chicken. So that's basically a shortcut to show you how to do that. So I'm getting a little bit farther and deeper than I really wanted to go <laughs> with this. I'm probably going to have to really cut this video down. But that's basically what I do. I just I rely on Google. I will rely on Pinterest. So that is pretty much how I get my inspiration for my meal plan. Like I said, I have my recipe binder video that is already out or will be coming out. So make sure to keep an eye out on, eye out on that. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for any other type of videos that you want to see me doing. And if you like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe. I'll talk to y'all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Christy and I'm planning us healthy. Settling and having a good, good time Doesn't matter if the snow is falling